The pandemic took a real toll on health care workers. Now another public health crisis has become just as crushing. Last year alone, Hennepin Healthcare treated more than 1,500 shooting victims. That averages out to four a day. 85% of them are now survivors. Tonight, senior investigative reporter Jennifer Merrily shares the very real cost of gunfire at the hospital in Minneapolis. All you see is young, previously healthy people in pain and suffering and scared. There's not one kid that doesn't make it that doesn't impact you. It can be devastating and heartbreaking. I feel that the general public probably doesn't have any idea of just how bad it is. It's a public health emergency crisis. These health care workers see the cost of gunfire regularly. It's lights and sirens when there's a call for a person who's been shot. It's a fast pace, fast action. Hennepin EMS transports a victim right to Hennepin Healthcare, the state's busiest level one trauma center. And they have a team waiting for us and it's a quick handoff. The care starts right through those doors in what's called the stabilization or stab room. It's where doctors and nurses treat hundreds of gunshot wound patients. Most days we see someone who's been a victim of gun violence. Um, and it ranges from non-lethal glancing wounds to multiple gunshot wounds to the head and chest. Dr. Jim Miner is chief of emergency medicine. It's tragic. It's, it's preventable. It's, it's death and destruction of young, healthy people who don't need to be dying. They work to stabilize the patient. Figure out what's going on, figure out where they're bleeding. What does full speed look like? It's really, really fast. The idea of right away is multiple people with a lot of skills going as fast as they can and doing everything all at the same time. Seconds make a huge difference. That's when a trauma surgeon like Dr. Kofi Fosu enters the picture. Bullets are unique in the sense that um, the injuries they cause can be so unexpected. High impact gunshot wounds, um, they can be unpredictable. He rushes a patient to the operating room. You know, in the operating room, that's where we do our, you know, the crucial part of our job. Really, our goal is to see what's injured, um, to stop any bleeding, to stop any contamination. You know, ultimately, we want to save a life. Emergency department nurse Evan Trewin is in the midst of the continual trauma care. It's mind numbing for people that wouldn't really see that, obviously. It's mind numbing for me who's seen it for the last 20 years, to tell you the truth. And I have to put it aside. Um, because I don't know what's coming in in the next 15 minutes after that. He's found parenthood has changed when he needs to pause. I do have to step away when those children come in that are close to the age of my children. I know that circumstances could just be flipped and I could be in their situation with my children. It's a stark reality of who's being impacted in the community. There is something definitely different about taking care of um, children that have been injured by firearms. The fact that I even have to say a statement like that. Dr. Ashley Bjorkland is the medical director of the pediatric ICU. And sometimes it's more intense. Some of these kids are on ventilators or um, certainly there's kids that we think, you know, they survive initially and um, progress to need the support for end of life care. It takes a toll. We're trained to sort of work through it, but we also do, you know, I think in pediatrics, we're pretty intentional about taking time to reflect upon um, the care that's being provided and how it's impacting us. And how it changes how they manage at work and at home. More stress, right? More um, emotional um, time that I need to spend recovering from the care that I provide for patients daily. A lack of feeling safety sometimes for my own children. You know, I text parents before they go to the house, you have firearms, are they stored appropriately? That's a common text that I send. Pediatric nurse Daniela Morales says she creates firmer boundaries with family and friends. If there's any sort of unneeded stress or drama, I have to draw the line. Like I just can't, I feel like I can't tolerate as much in my personal life anymore. The hard comes with this life-saving work. And it's hard to see people hurt so frequently and it, it's it's hard to uh, just constantly be processing all of the loss of, of just lives that are just senselessly destroyed. You see really this this violence day in and day out. Sometimes you you just have to um, remember you know why you're doing what you're doing. These days there is always another call, another patient with a gunshot wound to help. You can be frustrated with society, just the recklessness of what people are capable of doing to other people. Another run for a paramedic. It affects everybody. 
And if you're not coping with it in a healthy way, it, it will eat you and you won't be in this field at all. In Minneapolis, Jennifer Mayerly, WCCO Investigates. Hennepin Healthcare has a critical incident support team. It provides immediate emotional support and holds drop-in hours after a traumatic experience. Units like the emergency department also have regular meetings. 